Hello, I'm Alina Hernandez-Cyrus, and I'm one of the social workers at West Aurora High School. I'm here today with Kara Blaha and Kathy Bowling, also social workers, and we're here today to talk to you about how to support your student during remote learning. We understand that this is not easy. This is all new for us, and it's new for you. And we're here to give you a little bit of some suggestions and advice for how you can support your student. We'll be talking about expectations for home and school, organization, communication, stress and frustration, and lastly, strategies and resources. Starting off with expectations. We all want our students to learn accountability. It's really important for high school students to be held responsible for school. So we suggest that you set very clear home expectations and what that will look like for remote learning for your students. What time will they wake up? What time will they go to bed? What is their day school routine gonna look like? We know that students function best when they have a structured day. So this is something important to keep in mind. Discuss with your child the use of electronics and phones during the school day. It's also important for students to take breaks away from screen time and that they eat lunch during their lunch period and wake up early enough to eat breakfast in the morning. Even though we know it's going to be difficult for some families, please encourage your children to find a quiet place to do their e-learning. We understand that there might be older siblings or little kids running around or dogs barking, but a place without distractions is going to be really important for them, preferably not in their bed. Discuss the consequences for students not following through with expectations at home. It's really important that you follow through and that you're consistent with these expectations. Mean what you say, say what you mean, and don't say it mean. The school expectations are pretty much the same as once kids were in school. The same types of rules apply. Their dress code, appropriate language, their behavior, and attendance is also very important. We don't want to risk students um, being removed from Zoom classes for negative behaviors because if they're removed from their Zoom class, they're missing out on instruction and this could definitely uh, negatively affect their grades. Teachers are taking attendance every day. The grades count, so every assignment that students turn in are counting towards their final grades. Make sure when your children sign in that they're using their first and their last name and not nicknames and things like that. Lastly, make sure that your children are very clear about what the expectations are for each individual teacher in their Zoom sessions. Hi, my name is Kathy Bowling and I'm a social worker that helps to support all five houses here at West. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about organization, which is really important during this time. Some helpful tips for you to be able to help your child to become organized and independent during this time are to really help your child know what their school schedule is and how to look at it. Right now our schedule is broken down into red and blue days as well as asynchronous and synchronous times to be learning. During asynchronous time, they are to be working independently on their own on schoolwork. In on synchronous days, it will be live Zooms with their teachers and classmates. Um, if you need a copy of the calendar or the virtual learning schedule, you can find that on the district website. Another important tip would be to help them establish and maintain a consistent routine while they're at home. We already shared some tips, but helping them establish a time to wake up, go to bed, eating during the day, um, and we encourage students to eat during their designated lunch periods, um, a time for them to work on homework, um, and as well as to schedule breaks throughout their day. We really encourage students to be using a planner or notebook to have their schedules in. Make sure you work with your child to determine which one works best for them. You can also help set timers or alarms or make and use checklists to help your child stay organized. Um, it's really important that they have a study space that is organized and they have their materials ready before classes begin so they are not looking for things while classes have already started. Initially, you may need to help your child with these skills so they will be able to eventually do them on their own. Now I'd like to talk to you about communication and what you can do to help your child be more of an advocate for themselves. 
One tip that we have for students is to make a master log of each of their teacher's information, and this can include an email address, phone number, their Zoom link to their class, which it would be the ID and password, as well as their office hours. You can also help them understand how to submit assignments and write that in that master log, how late work policy works, as well as what the attendance policy for each teacher is. You may need to help your child with reaching out to their teacher, as they may not feel comfortable with doing it right away, but with practice and support, they should feel more comfortable doing so. It might be also helpful for you to help them identify a person to help them during the day if you or whoever they are with during the day isn't available. This might be an older sibling, a relative, neighbor, or another peer. Initially, your child may need help with these skills, but eventually they will become an independent self-advocator. Hi, I'm Kara Blaha, social worker for Tradition House. We know that during this unique time of the pandemic, people in general are experiencing higher levels of stress and frustration. We want to give you some suggestions that you can use to help your child manage their stress and frustration. Identify their emotional state. Ask your child each day how they're doing. Check in with your child. Also, make sure to look for their nonverbals. Explore strategies to manage their stress and frustration. Sit down with them and make a list of things they enjoy doing or they find soothing. Allow them to learn from natural consequences. It's okay to make a mistake. Promote brain breaks during their break times and lunch and study hall periods. You can look online for a lot of resources under brain breaks. Build in time for self-care. Preferably, these things are, can, can happen after their school day. They can do an activity they enjoy. Maintain connections with friends, even virtually. And if you do so in person, just be safe. Have your child get involved in a club or activity or sport. Yes, we are still having clubs and activities, although most of them are virtually, and sports are still occurring seasonally. Finally, if you feel that you need further assistance with your child's emotional well-being, you can request house support from their specific house. You can go to the Student Services page on the West High website and request this. Now let's talk a little bit about some strategies and resources that we haven't talked about. Your child may find that using a quiet fidget tool while they're on their Zoom lessons or sitting at their workspace is helpful. These are things you can probably find around your home already. Have water readily accessible at their workspace to drink throughout the day. Very important to keep themselves hydrated. Also, utilize those brain breaks throughout the day during breaks and passing periods. Important, go outside, get some fresh air during those breaks and passing periods. Also, make sure they're eating healthy food choices for breakfast and lunch. It's really important to fuel that body. Also, if you or your child are experiencing any technology issues, please reach out to the email helpdesk at sd129.org or call 630-301-5038. Great news, we are still having the AAC virtually. AAC stands for Academic Assistance Center. This page on this presentation provides you with all the necessary information your child will need to access it. This is for certain content areas only. Remote learning is new for everyone and it can be very challenging, but we can do this and you can do this with our help. Please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us at any time and thank you for listening.